glory was upon him. Mm. And mighty friends, let me assure you, as you're in the presence of God, God's glory is increasing upon your life. Mm. And people will be able to see it in the open. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we close our eyes and look to God? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you. Oh, we want to thank you and praise you because you are here in this place. Father, we pray that we will listen to the heartbeat of God this morning. Lord, we pray that we will not listen to the words of a man arising from human wisdom. We pray the heart of God will be revealed to us this morning. Lord, we thank you and praise you. We surrender ourselves into your mighty hands. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray, Father, believing. Amen, amen, amen. Shall we give a clap offering unto the Lord? The Lord has been good. Would you smile and clap your hands, please? It helps. Hallelujah. Somebody said when you smile, you look more beautiful, you look more handsome. And that's a tip, you know. Inexpensive, economical. Keep smiling. Smiling is a gift that God has given to us, mankind. Have you ever seen any other creation of God smile? A dog smile probably. It's time to run for your life. Not to smile back. But God has given us this beautiful gift of smiling. Amen. Amen. And before I go into what God has put in my heart, I think it will be helpful if I can share something about myself. Because I'm totally new here. And I would like to share as Pastor rightly said, my testimony. I was basically born into a Christian family back in the city of Chennai. And uh, I grew up going to church. Every Sunday, I had to be in the Sunday school as a child and vacation Bible school. Everything was there. And there were scripture contests happening in the church and other people were conducting and I was always on top my mother was a teacher so she ensured that I sit before the books and also with the Bible and uh, memorize scriptures and all that everything was fine as I was growing up but then when I got into my teens I fell in love I fell in love with music and there was this one guy whom I saw and I was attracted to him none other than the late Michael Jackson and he captured my attention so much and I said I gotta live like this man and I took to singing you know it is a very strange way the way I started or rather I began to sing I would go into my bathroom open the tab and the water would gush out into the bucket and in that noise I would try to scream on top of my lungs and call that singing and I did that for quite some time until one day my mom came and she was just banging on the bathroom door and it was as if she was trying to rip it apart I said mom what's happening we were living on the first floor and there was a family living in the ground floor the man living on the ground floor had walked into his bathroom and he heard me scream and he thought probably I was on the floor, you know, having fits, fighting for my life. And he came on top and told my mother, your son is fighting for his life, save him please. And slowly, you know, people started recognizing and I began to sing. And slowly from there on I moved into rock, hard rock and heavy metal. But one of the dangers of this style of music is that many of the bands are satanic, openly anti-Christian, defaming the name of Christ, and uh, many of their lyrics are blatantly against the Bible. The word of God is twisted, and it's like that. So hours and hours and hours of listening had its influence on me. And my heart began to turn around and there was a point in my life when I hated Christ when someone would utter the name of Jesus 
Anger will boil up from inside me. Hatred will boil up from inside me. And one fine day, I sat down and I thought, what can I do to hurt Christ? What will make him cry? What should I do to make Jesus cry? I sat down and I thought, then it occurred to me, Jesus loves his children very much. And if I can turn them away from him, I will hurt Jesus. I will make him cry. And then I decided I'm going to turn as many people away from Christ in this life that I live. I was hardly 17 or 18 at that time. And I took that decision and I said this is one ambition I will live for hereafter. And every time I saw people with the Bible, I used to, you know, they feel very happy, joyful. Because I had someone whom I could go and, you know, threaten and mock and question on their faith. Because I knew a little Bible, as I told you. I grew up memorizing scriptures. I knew a little bit of the Bible. So I tried twisting it, questioning people on their faith mocking them and trying to tell them hey I worship Satan even Satan can be worshipped and many were literally afraid not able to face me partly because of what I was doing and a few were partly afraid because of my appearance too because I was not like this those days long hair big chains and rings like snakes and skulls. My belt buckle was a big skull grinning at anyone in the front. And demonic images splattered all over my clothes. And uh, that was John before 94. And people wouldn't like to come and talk. It was not a very pleasant appearance. And with the demonic spirits around, it was still even worse. My musical stint started off like that and uh, college as we know is very big on culturals. Culturals is big time, competitions is big time. So we were winning in many culturals, we were gaining a recognition in the midst of colleges and most of my friends thought that John was a big hero, having a great life. Because most of them saw me on the stage and uh, they thought that was life. Even I was deceived into thinking that Michael Jackson was the happiest man on earth. When I was just 13, I was looking for love, I was looking for that joy. And when I saw him on stage, I thought that was his real life. I never realized that he had another life away from the stage. And many thought about me in such a way. And to keep up the image of a rock star, I had fallen into habits like smoking, drinking, doping, and whatnot. My life was totally in shambles. Because when I would walk, I would hear footsteps with me. I would turn around and there would be no one. Yet I would hear clear footsteps. I would know there are personalities with me. I know there are, you know, personalities walking with me. And when I would close the door and go to bed, the demons would glide to the, through the closed doors. They will appear on the walls. And slowly, you know, there came a point when I was literally living with the devils, completely under the power of these evil spirits. And no one would be able to come and talk to me easily. I still remember a few people who felt sick after they spoke to me. Just as we speak, just as when the power of God flows when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, when someone is full of these evil powers, this power can move too. And I still am able to recollect young boys who came and tried to convince me falling sick. Outward everything was looking fantastic, but I was broken because every time these spirits came in, I did not have peace. 
I did not have joy. And I titled myself as the evangelist of Satan. Because I thought I wanted to become an international rock star. That was my desire, that was my ambition. And I thought Satan can bless me. I really believed Satan can do that for me. And I said, let me do it. My only desire and ambition in, his, in life is to become a big star. It does not matter who gives it to me. So I thought Satan could 